It is time for another Recent Reads video and I have quite a few books to talk about and spoiler alert, I probably DNF'd some of your favorite books, but no surprise there. <laughs> so anyway, get yourself a snack and or a beverage and let's get ready to talk about them. Hello, hello, hello. My name is Nakia, welcome to my channel. So like I said in the intro, we are here to talk about all the books that I've read recently since my last video, which was every book I've read so far this year. These are the books that I've read, I believe mostly in May and some of June. I will be talking about some of your horror books that you've loved that uh, I may not have felt the same way about. <laughs> <laughs> some of my most anticipated books of this year, and of course, some Berenstain Bears books. So if all that sounds good to you, let's just get right to it. All right, let me take a sip of my tea. This is, I don't know why I'm looking at the tag. It don't tell you nothing, but we got a little quote on here. <laughs> this says, what a desolate place would be a world without a flower. I agree. But this is some ginger turmeric tea. So let's just have a little sip. It's still warm, not quite hot. Still warms the soul. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna start with these three books that I actually talked about in my TBR video, which you would have seen already. But anyway, these are three books that I have for my library and um, they're all DNFs. <laughs> Just get to them. First up, we have The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. Now, I have talked about this book enough. I talked about it in my 23 books to read in 2023 video. And as I said, my summer TBR. So I'm not gonna get too much into it. And also, I don't really know much, but this one is the tarot card mystery book. And I know that we are following this college aged young woman who is part of some research group. And it says something about a mysterious deck of tarot cards spark a deadly power game. So all of that sounded so so intriguing to me because as I've said previously, I'm fascinated with tarot cards and of course, we love a good mystery. But um, unfortunately, when I started this, it was just boring to me. I only got to page six because I just realized this was not for me. That is fine, you do what you wanna do, don't worry about nobody else. But um, the main character of this book, as I said, is in college, and I don't particularly enjoy following younger characters these days. I like, you know, grown folks with grown people problems, kids and bills and jobs and whatnot. And I just wasn't into the writing, it was just a little boring for me. So I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna struggle through this. We gonna move along because I got so many other books and again so many books so little time I'm not gonna waste time on books. I'm not enjoying just not gonna do it. So let's move on to the next one It is just such an overcast day today. I was trying to wait for it to get brighter, but that's not gonna happen So excuse my lighting. We'll try to fix it more in post. But anyway, this next book um a lot of you are gonna be upset because I know that a lot of you love this book and this author. And I have just realized this author is just not for me because this is my second book I've attempted by him. One I actually did finish. This one, I cannot, another DNF. But I'm speaking of the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I really wanted to enjoy this book. I was looking forward to it. I was trying to decide between My Best Friend's Exorcism and this one. The My Best Friend's Exorcism, I was like, that's not for me because they're young, as I already talked about. I don't really enjoy following young characters. And I don't know how closely the movie adaptation was to the book, but just when I saw the trailer for that, I was like, oh God, no, I can't. So that just turned me off from that book altogether. And I was like, well, this one deals with grownups, adults. This should be better. It takes place in the early 90s, which I was a child in the early 90s. So I was also looking forward to the nostalgia factor of that. But anyway, in case you don't know, I mean, it's pretty, you pretty much get the gist of it from the title of the book. All I knew going in was that there's these women that are part of a book club and this stranger shows up in town and he happens to be a vampire. That's all I know. But the reason this was a DNF for me is I could not with these characters. I just could not. I didn't like any of them. And I was like, I cannot spend, this book is not small. I was like, I cannot spend 400 pages with these women. I just can't do it. And I actually have some quotes from some Goodreads reviews that I felt like summed up my thoughts precisely. Because a lot of times when I feel like DNF in a book, I go look on Goodreads to see if I'm alone. And usually I find people who put it more eloquently than I feel like I can. So I'm just reading a little snippet of what some of these people had to say. This one says, Grady Hendrix said he wrote this as his own mother fighting a vampire and I have to wonder does he hate his mother because I think I do why else write her as this absolutely terrible person and mother otherwise everyone here is the worst that's how I felt 
Next one. This one also had to do with, to me, how I felt about the characters. Let me put this down so I can read this one. This one says, touted as fried green tomatoes and still magnolias meet Dracula. I wish I had known that because I probably wouldn't have picked it up had I known those things. But then it says, much like the bored housewives within these pages who find themselves bogged down with daily chores, family obligations, child rearing, and their sexist and controlling husbands, I yearned for more. I generally don't like reading books that have to do with, like I said, these bored housewives that are bogged down with chores and their children are overwhelming. Those just don't work for me. I'm surprised I enjoyed Finley Donovan because she was a mother who was struggling. But the difference with that one is that for one, I liked Finley Donovan. Number two, her children were not as big part of a book or her being a mother was not such a huge part of a book she had her own things going on so I was able to keep up and the parts that had to do with her children were relatable to me whether you have children or not so this one I'm just, I'm sorry I can't relate to like I said bored housewives who have time to go do book clubs and even the main woman in this book she's just overwhelmed her kids and she barely read the book I did not care and again I just didn't like any of these women so I'm sorry for all of you who are fans of this book but this just did not work for me I'm learning as I go along what I like and what I don't like and again I am finding that I just don't like books that have to do with like I said housewives and spoiled rich people I've said this before so unfortunately yeah I don't know what's gonna make me pick up a Grady Hendrix book I was interested in his book we sold our souls we'll see I don't know because that's an older book so I'm kind of worried about the writing but maybe something in the future will catch my attention but as of right now I just don't really not the biggest fan of his let's move on <laughs> Oh, and I don't think I said, I'm looking at my journal. I stopped this one at page 24. Usually I try to finish a chapter. I couldn't even finish a chapter with this. I was like, I can't with these women. I can't. So I didn't even finish chapter one. Sorry, not sorry. Now let's move on. <laughs> Last up with my library book holds that all came in at once. Talked about this in my summer TBR video, but this is another one that a lot of you were looking forward to this year. I wasn't. <laughs> I'm picky about horror, I've said this before. But I was like, this one has to do with a paranormal, you know, reality show. It's interesting, sounds like it. So you already know what I'm talking about. And it is episode 13 by Craig DeLuey. So for this one, I got to page 29, which is about this far in. This book does not have chapters because it is all mixed media. And uh, we'll get to that in a second. As I said, I already talked about this in detail in my TBR video, so I'm not gonna go too deep, but we are with a paranormal investigation type show like Ghost Hunters. They are filming episode 13, which is at the Paranormal Research Foundation where it's supposed to be haunted naturally. And all th kind of things are supposed to ensue. Yeah, so I don't think the mixed media thing is for me, at least not from this. I actually just watched Kayla from Books and Lala's video, Reading Books You Did Not Finish, where she talked about this book. If you wanna check that out, you know, I will link it below. But she read this book and I feel like the things she had to say about it made me realize I probably wouldn't have enjoyed it anyway. But like I said, it's just all mixed media. It's all emails and text messages and shot lists from their show. And then also there's just a lot of POVs and that was part of my issue too is that we were following different people on the crew and finding out their backstory and why they were here I just wanted to get to the paranormal investigation part of it also it just wasn't creepy it wasn't doing anything for me and I believe even Kayla said in her video that it's not a creepy spooky type of book so that's what I want when I read a horror book that's what I want and I wasn't getting that which is disappointing because I mean I like the cover and again the concept but I just wasn't into the writing for this one so yeah sorry let's move on <laughs> Okay, that is it for the DNFs that came from my library holds. Now we have two more. <laughs> it's a lot in this one. First, I have a soft DNF. So this one is The Institution by Helen Fields. I also just talked about this in my summer TBR video, so I'm not gonna go too deep, but this one was also one of my most anticipated books of 2023. And this is the one I've talked about where we follow a forensic profiler who goes undercover in a jail to try to figure out where this baby is that was ripped from its mother the mother of course was killed and now they have to find out where this baby is and um from the little bit i've read the baby is also being held for ransom this one is one that is a soft dnf because it's very dark well at least darker than i probably thought it was going to be as a mother i just wasn't prepared for that i wasn't in the mood for that there was already a little bit that took place in the very beginning of the book with the autopsy of the mom that made me a little like got a little misty and i was just like I don't, I don't want to do this right now. So um, yeah, and we hadn't even gotten to the prison part. I was like, I don't even want to know what we get into because this prison is supposed to be like in the middle of nowhere because it holds some of the most dangerous prisoners. So I was like, 
I'm not in the mood for this right now. Also, I wasn't 100% grabbed by the writing. It was a type of writing that was not easy breezy. I had to keep rereading sentences. It was just the structure of it. It just didn't make sense. It was almost to the point where I thought it could have been translated but I don't think it is. So I don't know. I mean, it's probably a DNF, but I'll say soft DNF for now. Cause who knows years from now, I may still be curious about it and may want to read it. But for right now, that's it for that. I didn't get too far. I think I got past the prologue and a little bit into the first chapter and that's where I stopped. So let's move on to my last DNF of the month. This next one is another one that was one of my most anticipated books of this year. And this one was also a buddy read that I did with Ty from Ty's Book Corner and Tori from Tori Morrow, both here on YouTube. I'll have them linked below. Yes, we tried to do a buddy read with all three of us and um, it is interesting. I will say that much. <laughs> But for my part of it, DNF. I'm not sure, I don't think I said it, but the author's David Wellington. I'm pretty sure he's the same one who wrote The Last Astronaut, which is another one that I wanna check out, but I don't know, we'll see. This is a horror sci-fi book, which you know always gets my goose. And I still have not really found one that I enjoy besides Helldivers, so. We're still looking. In this book, we follow a special agent and a doctor who go on a ship and their final destination is Paradise One, which is another vessel. When they get to this vessel, it is completely empty, but there has been a distress call, but again, no one is on board. So what the hell happened? on this ship. Now, because this was a buddy read, I did give it a good go. I actually got to chapter 10, which is only page 63. If you don't know, this book is damn near 700 pages. I borrowed it from my library for my Kindle, so it was over 700 pages, and that was already intimidating when I picked this up, but I was like, you know, maybe it'll be an easy breezy read and I'll fly through it. No. This is another one that's a theme for this month. I just was not into the writing and it was too many POVs, which it wasn't that many, but it was just, I just wasn't interested in most of them. It did start to pick up for me like around chapter six because that was to me when we were starting to get to know the characters and then it switched to another POV and it was back to more action based. This was just too action driven, not enough character development for my liking and it was taking too long to even get to the Paradise One section of the book. I had gotten all the way to chapter 10 and they were just leaving to get ready to go to get to this Paradise One ship. I was like, I, I actually forgot what the book was about. I had to go look at the synopsis again. I was like, that's this book? When did we get to this? So yeah, unfortunately, like I said, it was a DNF. I just, I was like, I can't hang in here for no 700 pages. If this was like a 200 page book, I might have been able to do it, but 700? Mm-mm. No, 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 no. So now let's move on to the books I actually did read over the past couple months. All right, finally, some books that I read. So you know, generally if I finish a book, it's gonna be at least three stars, unless I've read it for a book club or something and I forced my way through. <laughs> but on my own time, it's at least three stars. So let's start with The Housemaid's Secret by Frieda McFadden. Now I actually touched on this at the end of my every book I've read so far this year video because I was in the middle of reading this book during that video. Also, I wrapped up talking about the housemaid in that video, so I had to say, you know, I enjoyed it so much that I've moved on to the second book. I believe this is just a duology. I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's just these two books. Now, because this one is a direct sequel from the first book, I will say that anything I'm gonna say right now, you will probably consider a spoiler because if you don't wanna know anything about the housemaid, you don't wanna hear anything I'm gonna say, you can skip to my final thoughts in my rating. So I will put a timestamp here for where you can go to where I will talk about my rating. So for those of you who do wanna know a little bit, it's really mild spoilers. But again, if you don't wanna know anything from The Housemaid, this is your chance to exit. So in The Housemaid's Secret, we are still with the main character, Millie from The Housemaid. Now in this book, she is going to work with another family. We find out that after the events of the first book, she's kind of made a living working for families and helping abused women. But she's now in school, trying to become a social worker from what I remember. And she does take a job for this family because she's like, you know, this one seems different. The husband hired me. Doesn't seem like the normal thing. I can just work and go to school. So this family that she goes to work for are the Garricks. And as I said, the husband is the one who makes the money. He's supposed to be like this rich tech giant type of character, you know, like the Elon Musk, those kind of folks. And his wife is sick and she stays in the bedroom, which Millie thinks is weird, but she's like, mm, okay, she never really gets to see her. And the husband's always like, she's resting. 
like, okay. And then she also thinks it's weird that they hired her in the first place because the house seems like spick and span, spotless. So she's like, why am I here? In this book, she has a boyfriend named Brock and uh, they're going through things where she's trying to keep her past a secret, you know, but wants to tell him things and he's trying to move faster than she is. And she just keeps on about how like, I don't know, I need to tell him, I don't know if he's gonna wanna be with me blah, blah, blah. But then there is a love triangle. I won't mention who the other person is because you know, I want you to read and see for yourself. But again, there is a love triangle. When I talked about the housemaid, I mentioned how there was a romance in that one that kind of bugged me, but it was part of the story and it was necessary. So I let it slide. This one wasn't so bad. It was just her and her man just kind of started to get on my nerves. Cause I was like, if she says one more time about how she wants to tell him everything and I need to tell him and what, how's he gonna feel when he finds out about him? I was like, you don't just tell him or don't move on. But luckily that was not a huge part of the book, but it did just keep weaving in and out. There was also this other little side plot where she kept feeling like somebody was following her and watching her. And so there was also that kind of mysterious part to the story. Now, of course we know because we're following Millie that there has to be something going on with this family that she is working for. And I can't say anything because I don't want to give any spoilers away, but there are twists. There are turns as Frida McFadden likes to do. This one was similar to The Housemaid where it splits at a certain point. So we're following Millie for like the first half of the book. And then the second half, we're following someone else and we find out more of what's going on in this story. And I will say, first of all, this was a quick read. I flew through it. The pacing just kept me interested. I always am engaged with Frida McFadden's writing and I still enjoyed following Millie. I'm still interested in her. She's a character I don't mind. But I will say when we got to the second part of this book, I was just so irritated with this other person's POV. I didn't like them and nothing changed that by the end of the book. In the first book, the second POV we got made me like someone that I didn't like previously. Like I said, the opposite happened with this one. And to me, this one was a little more out there, a little more far-fetched, a little less believable. Not necessarily the first one was, but that one I could probably go with a little bit more than this one. This one felt more soap opery, lifetime movie, which was fun. I had fun with it and that's what I was looking for. I don't remember when I picked this up, but I'm pretty sure it was after I was having trouble with some other books. So usually as of right now, Frida McFadden helps me get out of reading slumps and this one was no exception. So yeah, at the end of the day, I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I believe I'm going to round it up to four. So I enjoyed this one also and I am enjoying these housemade books. Again, I don't know if she's going to make a third one. It doesn't really make sense to, but hey, she could do what she want to do. I'll be here for it. So yeah, like I said, my main issues were that it just felt way more unbelievable in this book. And I really just did not like the character's POV that we got for the second half of the book. Their motivation just didn't work for me like what was in The Housemaid. So uh, yeah, let's move on to another book that I read over the past few months. <laughs> Actually, mm -mm. now tea's getting cold. Before I get to my favorite book that I read while I was away. Of course, I have my Berenstain Bear books because I know all of you don't care, so I'll just get them out the way. But I picked up these two because I found sketches from these books in my sketchbook that I've had since I was like in middle school, sixth grade probably. But these two books are The Berenstain Bears, Get the Gimmies, and The Berenstain Bears and The Bad Habit. Yeah, so I enjoyed both of these. I enjoyed Get the Gimmies more than The Bad Habit. Uh, this one, I just don't feel like this one aged as well because it was talking about like kids being stressed out in school and having nervous habits and that was, Sister Bear developed this nervous habit of biting her nails and I was just like, kids shouldn't be stressed out in school, especially they supposed to be in elementary school. So I wasn't really on board with that part of it, but it was still cute. I always enjoy the illustration, so this was no exception. But get the gimmies I adored. First of all, we got to see them driving in their little convertible car. I was like, let me find it, they got a little convertible, excuse me. <laughs> also, the grandparents show up. I just really enjoyed the illustrations for this book and the message that was about, of course, being grateful and not wanting so much and being greedy. And so they called to get the gimmies pretty much being greedy. But like I said, it was so cute. I would actually like a physical copy of this one. I also saw so many things in here that I would wanna sketch because I do wanna try to sketch some Berenstain Bear stuff now as an adult, see how I do. But yeah, so again, I enjoyed both this one more than this one, but again, always a fun time. So now let's move on to my top rated book that I read last month actually. <laughs> All right, next up 
this one you should already know about because I posted about it on my Instagram page. Instagram is always linked below, but this one is another one that was one of my most anticipated books of this year and I'm glad I had a winner. It did not disappoint. And I've talked about this already, but just generally most of the books that I anticipate for the year just don't go well for me, but I'm so glad this one did. But I'm speaking of I Will Find You by Harlan Coven. So in case you don't know, this book is about a man named David who is serving his fifth year in prison for the murder of his son but he is actually innocent. Now, that's the only reason I was able to read this book because I was like, I can't be reading about kids getting murdered. You already know that's a no-no for me. But basically in the story, his three-year-old child was supposed to have been brutally murdered while he was sleeping. At least that's his side of the story. He doesn't remember anything. And there was a neighbor who said she saw him burying a bat in the backyard. And when they dig up this bat, they do find his fingerprints on it. So pretty much that was the nail in his coffin and he went to jail for the murder of his son. But again, from his side of things, he was asleep. He doesn't remember anything. So one day his sister-in-law Rachel shows up at the prison and she has this photo and it's from an event that one of her friends went to. It was like a company event. And he's like, why are you showing me this picture? But she's like, look in the background. In the background, there is this boy who appears to be about eight years old and looks just like his son. And he is convinced that is his son, Matthew, and he is very much alive. Now you may say, how would he know? First of all, a parent would know. But second of all, in this story, Matthew is supposed to have a mark on his face. I don't remember the term they used if I can find it I'll put it here on the screen but he's supposed to have like a red mark on his face or something like that and it's still there for this eight-year-old boy so then David decides he needs to get out of jail and go track down his son to clear his name because he's like I don't have time to wait for the justice system I need to get out here and take matters into my own hands <laughs> Okay, I was along for the ride, that's all I got to say. So, uh, of course, because this is all in the synopsis, this is no spoiler, he does get out of jail and he goes to find his son and meanwhile, the detectives, FBI, are on his tail. So, this was so fast paced, it was like reading a movie. I am now like, I need to go read some more of Harlan Coben's writing. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. It reminded me of Stillhouse Lake and some of Blake Crouch's writing. It just was so adult and again, it just kept me riveted. I will say already, I gave this one four stars. Why not five stars, you may ask? I will say there were two chapters and they were actually from the same POV of these other characters of the book that just dragged down the pacing a little bit and I was kind of like, can we get back to the main story? But otherwise, I was here for it all. We do have some multiple POVs. We mainly are following David, but we also have some chapters from Rachel's point of view, the sister-in-law. We have some POVs of the detectives, the FBI's looking for him, which was so fascinating because you're with them searching for him, but you're rooting for him. And you also see like they're getting close. And uh, like I said, I was so into it. This is one of those books that I still think about now. I think I probably have to have a secondhand copy one day because I just, enjoyed it so much. And it's funny because I was telling my daughter about it and she was like, this sounds complicated. I'm like, for me trying to explain it, it may be complicated, but reading it, it was so well written. It was easy to follow. Harlan Coben has said that Stephen King is one of his mentors. I believe it shows because I think his writing was just so good. Now, I was not expecting any twists and turns, but this one did have some. I mean, I kind of had an idea of the direction the story was going to go, but there were still some things that I was surprised by. And yeah, I can't say much more else because I don't want to spoil anything if you want to pick this up. I would suggest it if you're into, like I said, darker thrillers, not too dark because I don't go too dark. I would say some of the parts that were a little bit difficult to read were some violence that happened in while he was in jail, some fights and stuff. It was very graphic in detail. And I was like, oh my. But I I mean, it wasn't too, too bad for me, but I will say if those kind of things don't work for you, then you know, either you can read this and skip over that part or don't read this book altogether. But um, other than that, yeah, it was more just cat and mouse and him trying to piece together things and you know, one thing leading him to something else. I can just see this made into a movie. I don't know if it will be, but it should be. I do know that a lot of Harlan Coben's books have been made into movies and I can see why. I already have another one of his books on my TBR. You should already know it was in my summer TBR video. But yeah, I just so enjoyed this. But yeah, as I said, four stars, favorite book that I've read over the past couple months. I will probably say one of my favorites of the year so far. Of course, we'll see by the time I get to December, but so far, this is top of the list. But yeah, there you have it. All the books that I've read and DNF'd in May, the end of April, and some of June. So, of course, as always, feel free to let me know in the comments anything you have to say about any of the books that I talked about. I'm sure some of you have something to say about Southern Book Club's guide. You know the rest, it's a mouthful, episode 13, et cetera, et cetera. I feel better about episode 13 because in Kayla's video, she did say that a lot of people DNF'd that book, so I was not alone. 
Also, let me know if you did read Paradise One and finished it. If you thought it was good, feel free to let me know. I'm not picking that book back up, but I'd love to know. And as always, if you want to let me know that you made it this far in the video or you don't have a comment, you just want to show me some love, you can leave me a car emoji for the I Will Find You book, favorite book of the past few months because, you know, we had to get in some cars to get places. So you can leave me a car emoji below. And also all the books that I talked about will be linked below as well as links to booktubers that I talked about. And ways you can support my channel are also always linked below. You can donate towards coffee, tea, eBooks for new releases, all that good stuff. And I think that is all for this video, my beautiful people. So until next time snuggle up in your hideaway with a good book unplug as much as possible be kind to all kind and i will see you in the next video bye